Um, okay, so I have a few minutes to give you guys a bunch of information. Um, I'm gonna be talking about multi-CDN and what are some of the things you consider with that? What are some of the options you guys have out there? And what can you <clears throat> do if you wanna do some of this yourself as well? So we're gonna go through a few things. We're gonna talk about the problem, what's come, some of the solutions that are available, some of the challenges, and what it takes to build it. Uh, 10 minutes or less, hold on to your butts. <laughs> so, the problem. All right, single CDN equals single point of failure. At the very bare minimum, that's one thing that you really have to consider and is a big driver behind this. It's not just that, though. There's other factors that are gonna come into play that you can really consider to go for this. Um, may not provide the best user experience for all your users. There's geo elements. Not all CDNs are equal. Not all CDNs are equal across the globe. Uh, we're talking about potentially massive scale events here, so you have to be considerate about that. In addition, not all of them cost the same. Um, so there's other benefits and so forth that you can always take into consideration for your ruling. At the bare minimum, the concept of multi-CDN is that you're gonna have users, there's gonna be some kind of decision engine, and you can have multiple CDNs, okay? So that's as simple as it really needs to be. Unfortunately, it isn't exactly always that simple in the end, although there's some solutions out there that really try to make that for you. So when we really look at what the problem is, you know, you can kind of break this down, and the truth of the matter is, these numbers here are completely arbitrary. That depends on your needs and your requirements, and that will help define what solutions actually be best for you. Um, this is kind of a good breakdown of how I see it in many times. Oftentimes, the big portion of why you want to do this is for performance, right? To give the best experience to your users wherever they may be in whatever situations they may encounter. There's also things like capacity, availability, security, and the big dollar sign in the middle. So when we continue this on, there's other things that you really need to consider. Live video is much more complicated than serving a website. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone here really understands that, but when you start working with live and multi-CDN, that can also become more complicated. Having a unified origin and system that you can use for having the same content across different CDNs that can be synchronized appropriately is one of the first and most critical parts that you're gonna have to make sure that you handle. Um, then it's about how you're gonna deal with this. How are you actually gonna route your traffic? Uh, there's you know, old school brute force, uh, um, that's not gonna be interesting uh, and can work, uh, but now there's much more elegant and performance solutions that you can look to take advantage of. Um, to be able to make those decisions, you need data. This is also where you're gonna see a lot of differences in the decisions that you have when it comes to multi-CDN. Whether you're gonna do macro view looking at the network and the delivery, or at the micro view looking at your individual users. And then how do you take that data, aggregate it appropriately to really make a bigger picture that you can make your decisions off of? Then there's still also gonna be cost factors and so forth that come into your business rules. Another challenge you're gonna to have to watch out for is um, access security across CDNs. I can't uh, illustrate that one enough. The, they, a lot of uh, providers might tell you like, well, just unify your, your token access if that's what you're doing across all your CDNs. But then you're kind of reducing your, your security by doing that. Um, so there's challenges you have to really take into account there and not all providers really solve that for you. So that's something you really wanna keep in mind. So we're gonna talk briefly about some of the solutions out there. Um, first, from kind of a high level. Well, ultimately for multiple CDNs, you can just determine what users you want to go to which CDN. You can route traffic up front. X users go here, Y users go here. I want to do a 50-50 split or whatever. And you can deal with that in a number of ways. You don't need any special technology. You can do that A, B um, on your website or, or your applications in, in whatever manner that you want to. And that can be effective. That's a baseline. That's nothing really new. But more users are now starting to do that uh, just out front or, or applications. Um, more powerfully, you can start route traffic dynamically. Um, now, you can hard switch people in the middle of events if something is going wrong. We'll say, hey, we know there's a failure or we know we're having issues, we're gonna move people over. Um, but that hard switch is gonna be fairly jarring to your, to your users. It's okay, well, I have to reload my manifest and synchronize back to where I am and go from there. Um, once again, more of the kind of the older approaches. Better approaches are really doing this seamlessly. How can we dynamically switch users from potentially CDN1 to CDN2 or CDN3 or 4 or whatnot through an event um, or through an experience, a session, by keep, by keep that very seamless? And there's a couple key ways that we can be able to do that. Um, and it can be very different uh, in some regards for how you wanna do that when it comes to VOD and live. So we need to be switching stuff either at the manifest or at the segment level, generally speaking, in that regard or essentially you're switching what they're gonna be delivered at the manifest or the segment level. It doesn't actually have to be a switch on the client. Now, what are our, kind of our options? Well, we have automated CDN management, and that just means if someone's giving you a platform to do it all for you, great. If you're signed up for them, you're paying plenty of money and you're gonna have a good service that you're gonna expect them to be able to deliver. I'm not gonna talk about those. 
Um, the kind of two main ways that I've learned to kind of categorize your multi-CDN options are either going to be ones that are going to be focused on the DNS, kind of load balance side, or kind of ones that are focused more on the dynamic manifest or segment solutions. Um, ultimately, this can be done at either the client level, so in your applications, in your video players, or at the delivery layer. It can be seamless. And this one comes a lot down to a lot of decisions you're going to have to make as to how much effort am I willing to put into this, and what do I really want to get out of this? Do I want a seamless solution? I don't want to have to worry about the application. I want to just have this work out of box. And what are you going to be trading off for that? So when we look at the DNS load balance type solution, that is one that offers that. The idea there is that you can just hook this up and be able to deliver with your existing application. Um, and ultimately, you're going to be relying on a provider. Um, Sodexis is one example for this one, where you point your C name or whatnot over to them, and your route traffic's all going to route through them, and they're going to make decisions as to what content they're going to deliver, assuming that it's unified across your origins. And you can, make, uh, you can work with uh, almost all the different providers, and, or if you're building your own, to determine what kind of rules. You want a static, you want a round robin, you want a weighted round robin. Um, you want geo-based, so hey, I know that um, CDN1 is going to do much better in East Coast, North America versus Australia, right? um, uh, and therefore I can use a different provider out there, um, as well as performance base. And that's usually the bigger one, is that you can use stuff that, hey, instead of just a forced set of, hey, these users go here, these users go there, and that's a good way to start, but you can dynamically switch between alternate options in different locations. The other option is going to be something that's doing stuff to what is being delivered or, or done on the client, so either service or client base for adjusting what you're feeding to the player and telling it to request. Um, now, that can be centralized or distributed system with automated rules, just as similar as a DNS type solution, but generally the context here is this is going to be API driven in some fashion. Um, or an automated system. Um, and once again, you have a lot of good key ideas of how you can choose to distribute it and the business rules you can set up around that. Also, once again, focus back into your QoS and your QA, that can be done at the player or in the network as well. So a couple of the ones that I've worked with um, or have talked with and done some stuff with over the, year, over the time um, are some of these guys. Uh, they all have very different offerings. I just wanted to give you a quick splattering in my mini fast, very talking, speedily uh, session about some of the options out there. Uh, DLVR has a great solution that's really interesting. They actually will um, route the traffic through them, uh, and, but only a portion of it, to use that for the actual data uh, analysis, then deliver out, um, well, well mana, dynamic manifest, I believe is their trademark, um, where it will write out then the manifest uh, and point the TS files to whichever one they recommend for their CDN. Um, it's still C name driven, but it's not a DNS solution. And it's really cool in how they actually use uh, their system to monitor out the traffic. Um, Stream Group has Compass solution, which is a completely client side solution, at least primarily. You implement this, it can then integrate into your different applications across the platforms, and it will automatically do this based off of their data aggregation um, and QoS network as well as client side and distributed. Sodexus is a larger scale DNS based one. They do a lot of tag based monitoring as well. Um, so they have tons of different stuff out in their radar system that will go and ping and get you idea from a mass amount of both uh, uh, servers as well as users to try to help guide and understand what their network level is doing. And then Conviva is on the complete opposite, that they just provide an API. Conviva is great for real-time analytics. They have tons and tons of data. They can take that further and give you precision data for when and what to switch to from a CDN perspective, and then you can choose how to do that yourself. Now, do you need any of these? No, but these were kind of a different variety of the options and the type of solutions that are out there, so I decided to give those on there. Now, when we look down into some of the deeper challenges, there's some things that I've run into that I thought I might kind of call out, um, is uh, stream-based measurement versus tag-based. Solutions that are going to do tag-based, meaning that they're using these kind of preset little chunks and files um, that, that they're going to use to poll to determine this, aren't always the most optimal because it's non-realistic, and CDNs can actually identify some of that stuff and adjust for this a little bit. Um, so there's some stuff that, that's good to consider there. It's always best to be kind of measuring closest to the metal, right? We want to know what's actually happening. And ultimately, that's what become the, the, one of the biggest deciding factors in your multi-CDN solution is how do you want to measure that? Do you want to do that at your individual user level and aggregate that? Do you want to do that at the network level and what's kind of going on? Um, what I refer to is user select CDNs. Uh, you know, when you work with a larger pool of CDNs, you're going to have ones that are like, hey, I'm a Comcast user. I'm on the Comcast CDN. I can have the best experience and the cheapest cost 
to the provider if I'm using the Comcast CDN versus using Akamai, which might normally take, um, take precedence. But I need to be able to identify at the client level or in the delivery level, is that person on that network? Verizon network, same thing, right? So there's more of these now type of CDNs that also can serve specific user bases differently. Dynamic ad insertion. This could be a challenge for certain ones, especially if they have a client-side solution. Um, and even general, that can be a bit of a challenge. If you're doing client-side ad insertion, um, that is a challenge that you need to take into account, and that has a different mix of, uh, of requirements that you have to consider, uh, potentially. Um, security, I mentioned this briefly as well. Um, and that's if you're using so token access security across multiple CDNs. I don't really think that's the right solution to unify your tokens across all the CDNs. And if it's not, that's not something that all the providers always actually handle for you. They're like, oh yeah, you just want to unify it. Like, yeah, but that just means if, if one's compromised, they're all compromised. Um, having solutions to be able to do that appropriately are, is achievable, but is a different challenge that you have to take on. Same if you're dealing with DRM and so forth. If you're ever moving users at a kind of a hit, what we know of a problem, we're moving everybody over. If this is a million user event, watch out because you don't want to take down a CDN um, uh, pops with too much traffic coming over all at once. So pre-warm it, deal with it appropriately. Um, I just like, you know, Halloween, come on, it's T-Rexes. Uh, anyway, um, when you want to build something that custom at the client level, uh, there's a couple options that you can consider. Um, I'm just going to go over you guys two of them that we've worked with, um, and that can be kind of interesting. So um, one idea is that you can go ahead and create a dynamic master manifest at the client um, and feed that in. This, this is achievable on, on most of the platforms out there. We've done this for the Android, the iOS, as well as uh, web-based uh, solutions. And the idea is we can take different, what would normally be our, our set level manifest or different CDNs, and combine that at the client into a single um, stream set level manifest, uh, or top level manifest, and then be able to feed that directly to the player. And then it becomes seamless. And we can use weighted or other logic to determine which order we want them. Um, and be able to go from there so that it will automatically fail over if the client runs into an issue specifically for or other reasons that it would go over to a different variant set, it can then switch over to a different CDN. Uh, the benefit of this is it's pretty cool and it's fairly easy to work with, but the limitations are it only do it on errors uh, and you'll have to manage that uh, and be able to go from there. Concept is um, you can point out different, what would normally be top level manifest, dynamically combine those into different rendition sets into a single dynamic master, mana, uh, master playlist on the client, feed that over, and then the players will just deal with this normally on their own. Um, the way that this would then look is you'd have your different ones that kind of go in your ABC sets, um, and you can still keep your ABR but it's going to handle this on any failure and it'll go back between the different CDNs. And like I said, you can use whatever logic you want to determine what order they're gonna go in. You can take this one step further as well and you can do a dynamic proxy manifest creation. So the concept is somewhat similar. Um, the idea here though is that you're just going to provide a proxy into your actual player manifest that's delivered to your player engine and then you intercept those requests. This is also being able to be done on all the primary platforms as well. Uh, and that just means that you're able to take that request, um, say, hey, oh, this is requesting a manifest with this rendition set, and then at the client layer, determine what logic you want, and then route it to whichever one you want. This is similar to what things like, um, kind of similar to like what DLBR does and so forth, but at, at, at a broader spectrum, but you can bring a little bit of that deck back to the client, um, and then use whatever logic system you want. So if you wanted to integrate with um, Conviva Precision, you could do that here using that to be your deciding factor or whatever other system that you want to get those API or just the client information that you have and it becomes really distributed and each client can make its decision based off of what it knows, which would be more limited, um, but can handle it dynamically and reactive on the fly and keep that completely seamless so that when it makes new requests, it just makes one for the appropriate content. And you can do this at the um, manifest level or even at the TS level uh, and go from there and just intercept. Um, keep in mind if you're using some of the, the libraries that are out there, the providers that are out there, sometimes they're going to challenge if you want to use something like this with it uh, because they're kind of doing some of this sometime, uh, depending on which ones at the client as well. So um, ultimately what this comes down to is you really have to understand what you're trying to achieve, where you want to do this. You can do multi-CDN without changing anything at the client layer if you want to. That just means you have to handle it a layer above. Layer above, meaning like the DNS solution or something like that, something that's going to take that traffic, determine it, and reroute it automatically for you. A challenge and a risk that you're going to have to consider there is the potential of you have a single point of, you've changed one single point of failure to another single point of failure. 
right? So I have what well, I went from one CDN, and now I have multiple. But if all my stuff is being routed through a DNS service, what happens if they get overrun and attacked? And that has happened. Um, most of our, though, they do have great ways to kind of uh, try to protect that so that it doesn't come down to you. Um, and different platforms offer different level of with that. If you want to do stuff more on the client, you can have a bit more fine-tuned control, but you have to figure out how you're going to deal that at the aggregate level. Um, so anyway, I think I did that pretty fast. I'm really sorry to the ASL people.